Welcome to another episode of The Domino Effect, in which we discuss the intersection of our community's top social issues with legal issues impacting us all. I'm Jessica Thomas, a Florida family law attorney and your host. Struggling with mental health issues can be a major hindrance in one's life if left untreated, especially when facing legal challenges. The same can go for persons who are physically, intellectually, and developmentally disabled. One problem is that many individuals in this situation cannot afford adequate legal representation or the proper health care. In this episode, we discuss local resources that can help these individuals. Our guest for today will provide important information that can help those in need. Perpetual goodness goes a long way and every person, company, and organization have the ability to positively impact our community making Central Florida one of the most desirable destinations in the nation. We each have a responsibility to assist in some way when possible and continue to maintain the cycle of development and improvement in our community. This is The Domino Effect. Our first guest is extremely passionate about this topic. Katherine Davey is an attorney with many years of experience, specifically in the area of healthcare. She has an extensive list of leadership roles that she's taken for organizations such as the Down Syndrome Association of Central Florida and the Florida Bar Mental Health Committee. Katherine, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, it's great to meet you. Ah, it's wonderful, the work that you are doing in Central Florida. Tell us about it. So I'm an attorney who's practiced law for now more than 30 years. And I always say that for the first 20, I was a good lawyer. I was passionate about what I did. It was important work. It was all good. And then our youngest daughter was uh, born. We have three daughters. Our youngest, May, like May West, <laughs> has Down syndrome. And so as I entered the community of parents of children with Down syndrome, what I heard from them most often was fear and misinformation about what I did for a living. And I thought, I can fix this. This, this is wrong. And so I went to the then executive director of the Down Syndrome Association and said, hey, I've got this idea. Why don't we put on a program? And everything has to be a play on down, right, for Down mm -hmm. Syndrome. So it's low down on law. And I said, why don't we educate families? Why don't we educate judges, lawyers, everybody who will come and teach them about the legal issues tied to people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Everything from guardianship and the alternatives, to social security law, to the APD program with med waiver, everything and anything that has a legal tie to people with intellectual and dis developmental disabilities is something we have covered, will cover, or look forward to covering. So I just, I'm so passionate about it. Tell me a little bit about guardianship because I think a lot of our viewership you know, may not even know what that word means. I tell people all the time I do family law and sometimes they come to me, I'm like, that's not, yep. nope. I'm like, that's different. Yeah. So tell them what they mean. When you say guardianship, what does that mean? So a classic guardianship is like grandpa's developed Alzheimer's or dementia. Maybe he thinks the cats are the dead relatives. Yes, I've had that case. And it's time to take over because people may be considering taking advantage of grandpa or people are already mm -hmm. taking advantage of grandpa or maybe he can't make his own health care or financial decisions anymore. That's kind of a classic guardianship where a child or another family member will come forward, petition the court to say that really grandpa shouldn't be doing these things anymore and somebody else should be making legal or financial decisions for him. That's a classic guardianship. There's an alternate path for people with intellectual or developmental disabilities called guardian advocacy. I call it sometimes guardianship light because instead of the whole very complicated, very expensive path for guardianship where you can take away all of somebody's rights, in a guardian advocacy, the person has an intellectual or developmental disability like May does, and if they are unable to manage their personal or financial affairs, the court can with a letter from their treating physician that says may has down syndrome and needs the help of someone to make medical or financial decisions for her um, appoint mom and dad a sibling whoever it is that's petitioned to be their guardian advocate so it's a lot simpler process it's a lot less cumbersome it's a lot less expensive and if they can they can do it themselves they don't even have to have an attorney and so i do a huge amount of training in that world as, as antithetical as it seems to having a productive law firm. <laughs> but it's my commitment. If the plan is set up so that parents don't have to have attorneys, 
then let's make sure they're educated so they can do it themselves. And let's make sure judges understand and let's make sure everybody understands that there's this whole option that's not as complicated, not as hard, and mom and dad can just do it themselves. Having a child with special needs is incredibly expensive. It's incredibly hard. It's incredibly challenging. And I have clients who are like, if you just show me how, I can do it. And I'm all in. And I have other parents who are like, you know what? I've had to learn medicine. I've had to learn education. I've had to learn a million other things for this sweet kiddo. I can't take one more thing. How about you just do that? And I'm happy to do that too. Talk to me a little bit about the nexus between when you talk about hey, this is a financial burden for a lot of those families who are already really being hit in our community, legal aid's role and mm -hmm. your role with legal aid to provide these types of guardianships or guardianship light right. <laughs> to those Guardian families. Advocacy, right? Yes. So I, I do a lot of education both within the legal aid communities as well as the general community to make sure parents are empowered to either do it themselves if they can or educate other lawyers how to help families go through that process or sometimes I go to an event and they say we have eight guardian advocacies and we need someone to help and without calling my staff or approving it with anybody in my <laughs> team I just take them all and say we'll fix it because I just can't let people stumble and fall because attorneys may not be educated judges may not be fully educated it's a relatively new thing in the law it's not super new but within the last 20 years or so so it's education and information for everybody so it's better for everyone. And what I love is I can see those families, the more I teach and the more I learn as they sit in this room, I literally just see them relax. I just see the stress just come off their bodies as they're like, okay, my kiddo's about to turn 18, I know I have to do something, and now I feel like I have choices and I have options, and, and it'll be okay. Somebody will walk me through this. It's not going to be awful, and the judges won't take away my child. It's just so much misinformation. So, When we talk about some of that misinformation, I was hearing you talk about some of the resources available, even through your website, of people yep. being able to reach out, because a lot of our viewership may have that misinformation. Can you tell them a little bit about how they would contact or find those resources? Sure. So twice a year we do our program we call Lowdown on Law. It's a free program we do in partnership with the Down Syndrome Association of Central Florida. And it's, they kind of organize the, the ti exact timing and the who gets to come or the, the tickets, the Eventbrite stuff. And then we put it on usually at either a local school or something like that. Um, and we you know, spend four or five hours going through all the details and we bring attorneys and judges um, to go through that education. Every lowdown we've ever done, we have all the PowerPoints, all the everythings on our website. We also created, because if parents are supposed to be able to do this themselves, what I found out very quickly is that there was no forms for them to be able to do this process. Uh -huh. So hard to do something yourself if there's no forms for it. So the person I am, I created the forms. And I put the forms on my website. Because for me, it's not a game of Heidi Ball. It's not how can I take advantage of you? How can I make money off you? It's no, no, no. I want to educate and empower you so you absolutely can do this yourself. And I even offer what I call my homework options. <laughs> I want to do my homework your, myself, but if you'll just look at it and make sure it's right before I turn it in, or hey, can you do my homework for me so then I can turn it in, or can you just do my homework and turn it in for me? It's all the options so parents have choices, even within the realm of, gosh, I have to hire an attorney because I'm afraid to do it myself, but they don't have to do, I don't have to do everything. I can do whatever part you need me to do. And I can just help you realize and manage all this that comes with this next step of your kiddo's life. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for all that you're doing for our Orange County community. Thank you for taking up that torch. And I think you are absolutely reaching your goal of when you say you want to change the world, you are. Because sometimes people think that the worst of attorneys and you really seem to be making a change of that narrative of really taking your passion and bringing it to the people. I always say I do it for one little girl. But I'll change the world for everyone. Thank you. A special thanks again to Katherine Davey for sharing such an inspiring knowledge and story. We are grateful for her contributions to helping others in such a unique way. Up next, we have another guest who will share with us how he advocates for mental health in his profession. We'll take a quick moment to recognize our generous sponsors. A disproportionate number of Floridians don't have access to the justice system. 
That's why funding Florida Legal Aid exists to bridge this gap. Their mission is to increase access for the underprivileged by funding legal services, developing innovative tools and programs, supporting legal aid providers and the courts. Because of their efforts, they've been able to help veterans facing homelessness, children in the foster care system, men and women who've survived domestic violence, and securing benefits for our elderly and disabled. Doing good for the greatest in need because everyone deserves access to justice. Welcome back to The Domino Effect. We've heard how attorneys can help make a difference. Now we'll find out how professionals in healthcare can enforce change. Joining us now is Dr. John Steitler with Total Health Guidance. Good morning. Good morning, Jessica. How are you? Um, good to be here. So first, out the gate, tell me about yourself, your company, and kind of where you are in Central Florida. Okay. Well, we're Total Health Guidance. We're a comprehensive counseling center. Uh, we're located right across from Universal Studios, but we serve all over Florida, the whole state of Florida, through in-person or virtual um, therapy services. Uh, we do every kind of counseling imaginable. <laughs> so it's very, uh, very diverse, children, teens, adults, uh, mental health counseling, marriage and family therapy, uh, addiction treatment, even nutritional counseling, financial budget counseling, career counseling, wow. all, all types of, when I say comprehensive, it truly is a comprehensive counseling. You mean the whole gambit. Yeah. Now, when you say you serve all areas, talk to me about, um, you know, for those of our viewers who maybe don't know how counseling works. You can serve people outside of the state of Florida, the whole state of Florida. How's that work? Um, we're just licensed for the state of Florida. So they need to live uh, in the state of Florida. They can be traveling outside, but they need to be a resident of the state of Florida. And then you mentioned virtual and in person? Yeah, so our office is right near Universal Studios. People, uh, about half of our clients come into our office and meet with a counselor face to face, but we can also do video uh, and phone sessions for anybody in the state of Florida. And now you are a doctor in what? My doctorate is a unique uh, thing. It's called naturopathic psychology. So I'm a licensed counselor, but my doctorate is in naturopathic psychology, which means, like, think of a psychiatrist as a medical doctor that specializes in mental health. I'm a naturopathic doctor that specializes in mental health. So I look for natural approaches to treating anxiety and depression rather than just prescribing a pill. We're not against medication. Some people need it, but some people would prefer to do it naturally without the side effects. Talk to me a little bit about when we talk about anxiety, depression. I mean, it's all over the place now post-COVID that people yeah. are really, I think, focusing more on mental health. Has that been your experience that you feel like mental health has kind of taken a front seat or a back seat? Uh, no, I think more people are certainly aware of the uh, the mental health uh, issues. You know, most of our clients are just, people sometimes still have that stigma. They think mental right. health, they think severe psychiatric issues, and, and certainly that is a, a real need in the community. But most of our clients are just everyday people like you and I that are, they lost a job or they had a family member pass away or they're dealing with some unresolved trauma from childhood and they just have some anxiety that they want to manage. They don't need necessarily hospitalization or anything like that. They just need somebody to talk it out and help process it. Now, when you say manage, I've heard a lot within the mental health world that sometimes we should treat it more like you go to the gym. <clears throat> and even if something's not specifically wrong, you should be there managing just everyday kind of treatment. What is your kind of approach there at Total Health Guidance? We have a really unique approach. Uh, I'm not saying we're better or worse than other facilities. We're just different. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, we let people know that coming into it. We take one, we take a team-based approach, mm. um, which is a little bit different. So while most of our clients will have an individual counselor, we may refer to another team member for some one-off specialties. So if the clients are willing to work with this, the specialist in that particular area, somebody, somebody might have the presenting issue of anxiety, but that may be, come from a whole host of different issues. If it's unresolved trauma, if there's abuse or mm. things like that. So we have different people that work with different protocols and specialize. When you say we have different people, tell me a little bit about kind of the makeup. How, how big is it? How many counselors do you yeah. have? Well, we have a team of 15 and we're incredibly diverse. We have counselors in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, even 70s, black, white, Hispanic, male, female, uh, every different um, 
any way you want to define diversity, we have a really diverse team. Um, and some specialize in children, some specialize in, in addiction treatment, some specialize in like career or nutrition counseling or whatever. How did you come to you know this nexus with legal aid? Legal, uh, we've been partnering, I've been a member of the Orange County Bar Association for many years, uh, and we've been partnering with Legal Aid Society for a number of years as a corporate sponsor. So all the referrals that we get from attorneys, we donate 10% of our profits from those referrals back to Legal Aid Society. Wow. Now when we talk about people here in our Central Florida community, here you are, an expert in your field. How long have you been doing this? We've, Total Health have been around for 12 years. Okay, and how long have you been? So that's been you the whole uh, time? It was, I started it and then we've just added people along wow. the way. Wow. So you are an expert obviously in Central Florida. What would you say probably is one of the leading mental health issues? Would you say it's anxiety or depression? Anxiety is the number one diagnosed illness period. What does that more, actually mean? More than, more than heart disease, more than blood pressure, cholesterol, not just mental health illness, just the number one diagnosis. Is uh, anxiety. Is anxiety, some form of anxiety. Tell me what it means for our viewers. Like what, when you, you're the doctor, what does anxiety mean? <laughs> Um, anxiety can be, um, first of all, anxiety is just an emotion. Okay. okay. So we, we all have, anxiety is the appropriate emotional response when you don't know what to expect. There we like, go. Like, you know, I can have anxiety just Today. being here on this, <laughs> in this interview. But it becomes clinical when it's, uh, you know, when it's uh, has a, a exponential effect mm. and a limiting effect in, we either we don't know where it's coming from, like it's just out of nowhere. It can range from full-blown panic attacks to just uh, an anxiety, a phobia, a fear of going out in public or being with people, social anxiety. So it can show up in a lot of different forms. So anxiety itself is not a diagnosis. It's just an emotion. But within anxiety, there's generalized anxiety disorder mm. or a whole host of different diagnoses. So it can have quite a range. Talk to me about the connection between what you've experienced in your over decade of doing this with the legal field and people's mental health. I mean, you know, I, as I mentioned, I'm a family law attorney, so I feel like every day I'm doing some counseling yeah. and, and helping people in the worst times of their lives. Yeah. So with you, you are obviously seeing people when they're in a struggle and you're obviously doing a lot with the legal community. What would you say has been your experience and kind of some tips or resources that you have for people who are going through the legal process and dealing with mental health yeah, issues? Yeah. Almost anybody going through a legal issue is going to have increased anxiety, right? Or depression, depending right. on what side of the, uh, the issue they're on. So, and you mentioned that a lot of attorneys find themselves doing some form of counseling right. that they may or may not be trained in. One of our therapists was actually a family law attorney for multiple years, really? and then she decided to go into mental health. So, uh, but we partner with attorneys to help. That's, for example, if somebody's going through a divorce, they have all that emotion, um, and rather than paying an attorney, mm -hmm. uh, they can come and they, we can partner with them. We work through the emotional side so that the attorneys can just focus on, it doesn't work quite that way, but more on the black and white right, you know, right. uh, uh, issues. Now, when we talk about some of the, the partnership with attorneys, you mentioned a, a array of services that you all provide. I know that some people in the community are like, I need a guardian at light more. I think that this parent is you know, engaging parental alienation, or I think little Bobby or Susie needs help yeah. learning about the divorce. How do we even tell them? Is that a service that Total Health Guidance provides? Yeah, we do all of that. So okay. we can do everything from, uh, like you mentioned, somebody accusing the other parent, so we can do uh, drug and alcohol evaluations to mental health evaluations to full-blown social investigations. Uh, and then we work with a lot of couples. A lot of times couples come in and they're not sure they want to get the divorce. And we'll work through them like in discernment counseling to figure out is this relationship going to work. And if it's not, try to do it in the most amicable way possible, including how to tell the kids. Wow. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing for the Central Florida community. Thank you for your support of legal aid and 10% and of prop, that's huge, of those referrals, that is huge. And so I commend you and thank you. Well, thank you. I would like to thank John once again for joining us and reminding us about how important it is to take care of our mental health. We are extremely lucky to have leaders in our community like John who advocate for the importance of mental health. We'll be back with our final guest shortly after this break. A disproportionate number of Floridians don't have access to the justice system. 
That's why funding Florida Legal Aid exists to bridge this gap. Their mission is to increase access for the underprivileged by funding legal services, developing innovative tools and programs, supporting legal aid providers and the courts. Because of their efforts, they've been able to help veterans facing homelessness, children in the foster care system, men and women who've survived domestic violence, and securing benefits for our elderly and disabled. Doing good for the greatest in need because everyone deserves access to justice. Welcome back. Our final guest for the show is Legal Aid's very own attorney, Mexi Roberts. Thank you, Mexi, for being here. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. What do you do at Legal Aid? I am a guardian ad litem program attorney, and I have specialty areas of de developmental disabilities and drug court and baby court. So when we say developmental disabilities, what exactly does that encompass? So I typically assist uh, and represent children who have special needs um, and developmental disabilities would include autism, uh, cerebral palsy, spina bifida, Down syndrome, uh, things of that nature. Give me an example when we talk about representation. What types of cases is it that you're doing for our viewers who maybe don't know what legal aid is, what that representation scope kind of looks like? So with respect to my representation, the Guardian at Lightum program with legal aid is um, we represent children who have been abused, abandoned, or neglected. And they are, when they are abused, abandoned, or neglected, the courts open a dependency case on those children's behalf. And my assignment and the GAL program's assignment comes as a result of being um, assigned cases through the, the, the dependency system. And what I do um, so my cases come through the dependency system, and the children, unfortunately, um, come from all walks. Of, well, come from all walks of life, and um, some of those children have those uh, developmental disabilities that I mentioned. And what we do, um, in I represent them in court. Uh, I attend meetings on their behalf. I am one who advocates for them, for them to get special services through both state and federal agencies. Um, I advocate for, just for their best interests so that they have the, the, the needs and service, their needs met and the services that they require that will assist them in making their lives, um, making their lives good. Tell me a little bit about what brought you to Legal Aid. I came to Legal Aid, I was a volunteer initially. And um, through my volunteer work with Legal Aid, I um, was referred for a contract position, which I did through the GAL program in Kissimmee. And when that contract position ended, there was an opening for um, a position with the Downtown Orlando Legal Aid Society office. Um, I started out as the VAT coordinator, which is the Volunteer Advocates for Children program that we offer. And I was the Volunteer Advocates for Children um, coordinator, as well as I had a small caseload representing children. Now, when we talk about Volunteer Advocates, that's a way that people and our viewership can get involved, right? Absolutely, yes. And when we talk about a volunteer advocate coordinator, are those the types of people who similarly do what you do of looking out for the best interests of the child, home visits and things like that? That is correct, yes. We have, we train volunteers, um, and they come from all walks of life. Some are, are teachers themselves, some are retired people, they're housewives, they're students. We train them to do home visits, um, they meet with the children and the families where they're living, they go to the schools and talk with personnel at the schools. Um, they gather information for us as the guardians at litem and write a report for us monthly and then submit the reports and we rely on those when we're advocating for the children in court. Now when we talk about advocation for these children, if I'm a parent going through dependency, you know, 
is it true that I can take comfort in knowing that you've been trained within those kind of special developmental areas for some of those special kiddos to really advocate for them while maybe I'm getting my life back on track from maybe substance abuse or domestic violence, right? Yes, it is. Absolutely. That's what we do. Our goal generally is to see that the services are put in place to help the family, whatever that situation was that brought them into the dependency system, we want to rectify those issues, put services in place such as training, um, classes, whatever the, whatever the family needs. And then once we have ensured that the, the services have been put in place, everything is functioning the way it should be, we like to close the case with reunification. In the, it, that's the best possible world for our kids and for the families. Now, in Central Florida, as far as Orange County, have you recognized a significant need for those children with special developmental or intellectual or cognitive deficiencies? Yes. What would you say is probably one of the pressing issues, more education or health? I think, I think it's a combination. Um, honestly, with some of the children that I've seen, I, I don't think that their parents necessarily want to neglect them. I think there's a level of they just don't know how to handle mm -hmm. the children's needs, um, especially those with those higher levels of needs with like the children who have the, um, who may have cerebral palsy or a combination of things, cerebral palsy and developmental um, delays. Those are, uh, or they may have feeding tubes. Some of those types of situations can be overwhelming for, for anyone. And so what we try to do is educate, uh, put the children in the safest place where they can be, initially so that the parents can get the education that they need in order to be able to care for the children, um, make sure that the children are getting every service be, so that they can get to the doctors and make their appointments and um, set, we try to set families up for success. When we're talking about children going through the dependency system, are we also talking about children who are suffering from some mental health issues of their own? Yes. Can you give me an example or tell me a little bit about what your experience has been with those children really struggling with mental health issues in the dependency system and how you've been able to help them? Well, um, we're service oriented. We, we try to partner with the um, case management agencies um, and ask them to make referrals so mm. that the children get the mental health services that they need. So any individual counseling and therapies, um, we're, we're, we're trying every day to try to ma match them up with the services that they need. Now, if I'm a viewer watching this and I really want to reach out to Legal Aid and see if there's a resource available to me, do I have to qualify in any way or can I just come and reach out? Is there an intake process? How does that procedure start? Yes, we do have an intake process um, and you would just call our Legal Aid Society uh, number, which is 407-841-8310. Um, speak with the receptionist, let the receptionist know what, what your needs are and she can route you to intake if it's a, if it's a service that we provide at Legal Aid or um, some services we may need to uh, send to the lawyer referral service. So it just depends on what the situation is. From your personal experience as a happy note kind of to end on, tell me, you know, do you have a memory of a child that has had special needs or a mental health um, issue that you've been able to really see kind of come full circle with your work there at the Guardian at Lightum program? I can think of a few. I'll, uh, I'll just say that it's a, it's a joy and a pleasure to um, help children reach their full potential, help the families realize that yes, you, yes there was a, a very difficult time in your life, but you put the work in, you did what was necessary, you overcame it, and you were able to be reunited with your children. Wow. Well, I want to thank you for what you do for Orange County's community. Thank you so much for taking on those who need it most, our children with those special needs and any developmental delays. We appreciate you, and thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. A special thank you to Mexi for sharing her experience with us and demonstrating her commitment to excellence on behalf of her clients. The Legal Aid Society wouldn't produce the quality work that they do if it weren't for attorneys like Mexi who are genuinely caring about their clients. To our viewers, thank you for watching, and we encourage you to join us again. I'm your host, Jessica Thomas, and this is The Domino Effect. A disproportionate number of Floridians don't have access to the justice system. 
That's why funding Florida Legal Aid exists to bridge this gap. Their mission is to increase access for the underprivileged by funding legal services, developing innovative tools and programs, supporting legal aid providers and the courts. Because of their efforts, they've been able to help veterans facing homelessness, children in the foster care system, men and women who've survived domestic violence, and securing benefits for our elderly and disabled. Doing good for the greatest in need because everyone deserves access to justice. The Legal Aid Society has existed for over 60 years, providing legal representation to clients on issues similar to those discussed in this episode. It is imperative that the community knows when faced with legal troubles, you are and should still be able to receive high quality legal representation and access to justice regardless of your income. If you are seeking assistance on a legal matter, you may contact the Legal Aid Society law firm by calling 407-841-8310. The Legal Aid Society is a nonprofit law firm that relies greatly on volunteerism and donations. For more information on how you can support this worthy organization, visit LegalAidOCBA.org today. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of The Domino Effect. And remember, perpetual goodness goes a long way. See you next time.